Hello, my fellow sorcerers. How would you like to fire a magically enhanced fingernail at your at your enemies? You know, look, I'm not I'm not saying that the um that the Shadow of the Earth Tree sorcery options are weird. I just never would have guessed we're going to get an entirely new school of magic known as the finger sorceries. But you know, maybe that's on me. In any case, uh, let's talk actually how to get a brand new set of sorceries as soon as possible from starting in the Realm of Shadow. Now, I will say to begin with, a lot of the good stuff is very later on, very endgamey, very locked behind a lot of things, so it's both a blessing and a curse, because it means when we do get to them, they tend to be quite badass, but you might be waiting a little bit to get a real sorceress fix. So hopefully this video will at least be a nice middle ground to get you some new toys while also whetting your appetite for what's to come. So first and foremost then, let's actually look at the five earliest sorceries you can get your hands on and well what they do, are they actually any good, and then we'll go over how to get them. Firstly then, and it does feel good to be back in the old uh, training dummy test giant grounds, it really, really does, we have ourselves at Glint Blade Trio, the soonest, quickest new sorcery you can get. Now, you know uh, the uh, Glint Blade, it's the uh, summoned little bluey portal in the air, after a delay, it fires out the Glint Blade. It's a solid sorcery, and this just makes it three instead of of the usual, which is nice, you know, the delay can catch people off guard, it can let you stack up quite a few in the air to have them all go off back to back to back, but ultimately, it's nothing crazy, right? It's a bit of fun, it's fine, it's not going to set anyone's worlds on fire, primarily because it's not a magma sorcery, uh <laughs> I'm so sorry. And it's just kind of okay. I would categorize this one as maybe new filler, and even as far as wasted potential, it does have decent stagger, and it does uh, let you do a few little neat tricks with the delay. Basically everything you could do with the original weaker version, but that's about it. It's not super exciting. The next one, however, is a lot more exciting. This is called Miriam's Vanishing, and it is really quite fun, and it also feels like about time this is a sorcery in a Souls game. So what it essentially does is not just made you disappear and reappear, it lets you teleport, which is really freaking, I think we can agree, cool. It will send you in the direction that you are aiming when you first use it, and yeah, it's fun, right? I will admit, though, that I wouldn't use it too much to try and avoid damage. It's no real replacement for a roll. It might go off pretty quick, but as you can see, you still technically exist, you're just kind of going invisible, and it's not like it's a iframe cheat, which is definitely a shame. You can't just phase through enemies, through bosses, though it does sometimes help you reposition in a way that you normally couldn't, but it's gonna be touch and go. So don't think of this as a new ticket to never taking damage, it's not really that. It is quite useful for a sudden quick reposition, but that's about it. I actually think it might have more application in PvP, where you can bait out whether you're actually going to teleport or not. Whether you stand on the spot, or actually do the little jump forward. But, I think on a base level, it's really cool. It's also a little bit bugged in that it doesn't seem to cost any actual FP most of the time, so that's certainly interesting. And it has some interesting interactions when it comes to ledges, because you might be thinking, huh, can we, like, teleport across gaps? Is that what's going on here? Well, I'll let you answer that question for yourself. Not really. I mean, technically speaking, if the gap is small enough that uh, you uh, could jump across it normally, like you can with this one here, then you might be able to get it happen, but if you are too close to a ledge, 
it actually won't just let you go forward, which is a little bit of a shame. Really, it's limited to cool factor and mind games and PvP. So I love the uh, sorcery and concept, but in actual usefulness, uh, your mileage may vary, and I'm hoping that we will in time discover something particularly crazy about it that as of yet hasn't been found. Following that then, we have the first of our new school of magic, Finger Sorceries in the Glint Stone Nail. You might have seen some enemies casting this at you. It's this little darting uh, pellet, a, a new sort of more muted colour as it sort of snakes through the air delayed. And as you can see, it does do a fairly respectable amount of damage, especially for the FP cost. In fact, it's one of the most FP to damage efficient sorceries that we've got going on, which is really, really nice. It also does like to find enemies even without you targeting them, which I uh, do think is quite a nice little feature of it, as well as having really, really long range. Again, I don't think it's like going to blow you away, but this one is actually genuinely useful and it is a solid functional new little ranged blast that we can use. And yes, there is a special glintstone staff to buff finger sorceries, so they do get even better. Second to last here then, we have glintstone nails, the cluster version of glintstone nail singular. This one I really like. It hits very hard, it's chargeable like the single one is, which means we can use things like Godfrey's icon on it, which is always good, but it still casts quite quickly even despite that, and then it just fires five of them out. It essentially does just a little over double damage of the single, but what this really has going for it, and sadly the giant doesn't have enough health to show, but the bosses of Shadow of the Earth Tree certainly uh, very much do have enough health for it to come in handy, is massive amounts of stagger. These nails really do put people on the ground for crit attacks, and that's really, really nice. There is a particular remembrance boss I won't spoil or go into, but this sorcery by itself carried me through it in a really strong way. So I really do like glintstone nails here. It's probably the best one you're going to get for a while, and might be in contention in terms of just pure numeric functionality usefulness as a standard sorcery goes. It's up there for the whole DLC. So yeah, I am a big fan of this. Now, you'll notice I don't actually have the fifth one on currently because it's a Remembrance Sorcery. So if you don't want to be spoiled on it, what boss it's from, where it's from, then skip to the next timestamp and I will see you there. For everyone else, let's do this because it is ultimately the second sorcery you can get your hands on in terms of time and relative distance from your first appearance in Shadow of the Erd Tree. Meet Relana's Twin Moons. Combining uh, both of the full moon sorceries, we have a first drop of Renala's full moon and then a second drop of Rani's dark moon, which is really, really cool, and it sounds especially badass on paper. And I hate that I'm about to say on paper here because I admittedly got myself way too hyped for this, and then when I actually cast it, I was a bit disappointed because the boss version of it that you have to deal with when fighting the boss is so much cooler. However, it's still phenomenal. So first and foremost, you get this from, well, Relana, her remembrance. She is the boss of Castle Ensis that you enter from the castle front, across the bridge, and up into it, you fight her in here, the Ensis Moongazing Grounds. Cool, I uh, won't go into it any more than that, it's very self-evident how to get there, it's just a mini dungeon, not a legacy or anything, and that's all well and good, and if you do beat her, you get to go into this next area via the more direct path, as opposed to the back door that I will also talk about, because we will need to get to this area for the locations for the others. In any case then, that's all said and done, let's give it a cast. You hop up in the air, you drop one, and then you drop the other. So, essentially imagine it as literally both of the full moon spells cast back to back and they explode on you instead of traveling. And the main thing here, outside of the damage that it does, which is really nice, and of course it has all the effects that the moons have, i.e. it makes the enemies more susceptible to uh, magic damage, the uh, little uh, debuff that it applies. It also does do frost damage on the dark moon uh, part of it, but it also does a lot of damage, as we saw, which is really, really nice too, and it's a big AoE. However, the real X factor that I think is here is if I can actually get into the moon. While in the moon, you have ridiculous 
ridiculous poise as opposed to the others that don't really help your poise at all and you can just get hit out of them as you're slowly incarnating into the moon itself before shooting it. So you can actually use it quite well in a crowded area and uh, not take too much damage, not get knocked out of it, and then drop the moons. If I go into it up once more, and you see there I got stabbed by that guy before it dropped, and it didn't make a difference. You also, I am absolutely convinced, do have some damage reduction while in the moons. I've really noticed things just not hitting me as hard while I'm in them. So essentially, you do float up into this defensive cocoon, and then drop a lot of effective debuffing damage onto everyone around you. It's harder to pull off in boss fights, even with the extra poise and damage reduction, but when you can find the opening, it's very, very nice. It probably costs a little bit too much FP for the output that it does, but you're not using this for efficient damage, using it for big effective damage. So that's the Twin Moons and where you get it. Welcome back then to everyone who skipped ahead to not see all of that. Let's go get those four sorceries, starting with Glint Blade Trio. Starting at three path across, which we get to just from the very beginning very easily, we want to go across the big old bridge and then get to the castle front grace. This is for your trio of glint blades. You want to go up and enter Castle Ensis and do this whole dungeon. I'm not going to spoil the actual inside of it for you, but once you get to the Castle Lord's Chamber Grace, you have actually passed it already. So going from this grace, you want to go downstairs, down the elevator, retrace your steps uh, past uh, various enemies until you reach this gate. Just before going through it, you want to drop off the wall to your right, rotate round, climb up ladder number one, climb up ladder number two. Then very quickly you can drop down on your right and there will be a corpse on a wall which will give you the sorcery. Really hidden away for how just normal it is, but I digress. Then, as we've discussed, the other sorcery uh, that I'm not going to show in this section for spoilers is in the vicinity, let's say. You can watch that section if you want. But uh, let's get Miriam's Vanishing and our two Shattering Nails. So, step one, we need to get to this whole section. And in order to do that, you either need to complete uh, the uh, Castle Ensis and uh, beat the boss there, which will kick you out here, and then you can get this grace, or you need to take the back entrance, which will instead uh, put you out in the Fort of Reprimand. I've got the map still shadowed here on this save, so I don't spoil this area for you because it's particularly cool. In any case, uh, the main entrance, as I've just said, is fairly simple. You just literally do uh, this dungeon, but if you want the back entrance, I will show you if you wish to avoid it or not handle the boss in there. Yet, if you don't have enough blessings, I will not blame you. It's brutal. Head down here from this grace, going down down this slope here, at which point you will pass through this and end up in this poison swamp. Thanks, Miyazaki. Then we want to walk across it, straight across here, until you get to this cliff face. Follow the cliff face down, and there will be a spirit spring here for you to activate. If you go just a little bit up past it, you will find the pile of rocks to destroy to activate it, and then when you jump up it, you will reach a cliff ledge with a second spirit spring that you then jump up once more, and then you will land in the this behind the Fort of Reprimand Grace up on the Bramparts Battlements, and then you can now do this little mini dungeon. And then once you get out the front of it, uh, to the main Grace, you just simply leave, go under this archway of rock, go up uh, this uh, path, and now we are in this main area. So no matter how you get to this zone, whether by the castle or the Spirit Spring back door, you want to then just take this easy path up here, down here, pass this Grace, and then to this the moth ruins or if you're coming from here straight up the road again to this grace and then the moth ruins within the moth ruins there is a big hole in the ground there's actually two holes in the ground and you want the smaller one you want to if you can see the grace from where i'm stood turn around run a little bit and it is this one here if you follow this all the way through you will eventually get to a ladder climb up it and you will get this the bonnie village grace and this is bonnie village then, very, very simply, it's just a straight line shot. You want to run across this bridge over here, stop by the whipping hut, if you know what I mean. 
And then continue on all the way up this road. Just follow it. There's nothing in the way, nothing confusing. Just follow the road, nice and normal, all the way round. Get to this water and cross it to get to here. Our ultimate goal, the Cathedral of Manus Meteor. The hub of all things sorcery, mainly for Shadow of the Earth Tree. Once you are here then, walk inside and talk to our new best friend, sat in the chair past the grace and the gate, and he will recognize you as someone worthy to learn the ways of the fingers. And in doing so, he will give you a couple of things. The whole laden necklace. This also starts his quest, and using this necklace where he wants you to use it is what will unlock a few more sorceries. But first and foremost, you can talk to him, ask him about what he's doing, ask about sorceries, and then purchase sorceries from him. He'll sell some normal ones you recognize, but immediately straight away, as you'll see, you can get Miriam's Blessing. So that's that. For the Shattering Nails, then, we need to go to the first location to use this whole laden necklace. Now, this one I'm going to do on the map for you for the most part because it's very cool, very epic, and I don't want to spoil it. It's very obvious and apparent when you get there how and what to do, but I do want you to experience it. For now, though, start at the Castle Front Grace, head all the way down here to this Poison Swamps. Instead of going around here like we did before, we go through the cave, heading down the path to get to the Elak River Cave, head out into the river, go south down here, and then eventually you will come out in the lovely Cerulean coast and get this grace. From here, let's stay to the map. As I said, I want you to really experience this properly firsthand. But what you want to do is go straight down here, keep going all the way. You can grab this gay grace while you want to, and then head back here, go down these two big tombs until you get to the beach, run along the beach all the way here, go up this big tomb, get this grace, the finger ruins of Rhea, run all the way down this cliff, straight up, and then here, this very spot where I am hovering, you walk here and use the item and then once you've used the item you want to just go back to the cathedral tell him that you've used it he'll be all happy he'll give you a few more breadcrumbs to the next part of his quest but most importantly for now he will sell you the two sorceries the fingernail ones that we desire now the rest of his quest line is very expansive very late game very cool and something that i will be giving you a dedicated guide on very soon so look out for that but for now yeah this is a good place to start your sorceress journey in Shadow of the Erd Tree. I hope you found all this useful, and I'll be back very soon, I'm sure. Like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future channel on Patreon down below, and until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos, dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes, bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye